Yeah. <laughs> God, fuck you, Jeff. <laughs> Welcome to the very last episode of our SoFlo Summer Brewery Tour without the bar podcast. I'm your host, Mike, and as always, the schmuck to my left. <laughs> yeah, I'm always to your left, actually. Yeah, me, Jeff. It's Jeff. What's Hollywood. up? I left. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jeff's here. Jeff, how are you doing? I'm good. Feeling yeah. good. Getting a little second, maybe getting, even third wind. Yeah, I was getting tired coming here. but At least Maybe fourth wind. I don't even know. You know, our guest excitement just kind of <laughs> livened me up. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah, for sure. And across from Jeff, joining us yet again for the fourth time in a row, Darren or the house. What's up, how's, Darren? How's it going, man? Good, dude. How are and you? And we don't have to share yeah. a mic this time. I know. <laughs> Isn't yeah. it cool? It's so cool. And our special, special guest is not Dave. Red Dave. It's not Dave from the Florida Beer Blog. It's Brian from Due South. Hello, hello. Making his triumphant return. <laughs> second, <laughs> I was this time I'm not second grabbing Carlos's ass. I'm yeah. feeling kind of weird about that. Talk about being pirates. Well, I mean, if you, have to, if you have to grab an ass, I'm here, so, you know. <laughs> well, I've got some other options, too. I mean, we are at the brewery, so there's that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Darren's looking good over there, too, <laughs> you know. I mean, I've heard That mustache there. says some stuff, you know. I get it to curl down. <laughs> <laughs> We were here at Due South here in Boynton Beach, Florida, in the back of the Bang Bang Room. Uh, to, be, room. to be honest, this is called the Air Conditioned Tap Room, air which is a lovely 15 room. degrees cooler than the outside. We call it a Bang Bang Room, though. Bang Bang Room, yeah. It's the back room. It's it's intimate. It's it sexy in here. We're on a nice I mean, round table. I candles. And that's... Yeah. Round table. We're all nice I and just, close I to mean, each my, other. And my shorts got a little tighter when I got in here. That's all I'm saying. Situation yeah. going on. I had to do a lot with the caramel latte. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that the is a sexy beer, right. too. That is a sexy <laughs> beer. So we're going to do South, like I just said. One of my favorite breweries in Florida. We've been saying that for God knows how long. And we're finally and here. we're finally here. Yeah. Finally. Now, we can't, months we months can't later. thank you guys enough for, for making the trick to see us. Um, it, it, it means a lot. Um, you know, our little breweries come quite a long way in the last four years. And uh, I'm, I'm so grateful it took you this long to get here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and if you could have waited longer, it would have been better. Well, I mean, by, the time, by the time you guys come back, you know, in another four years, we'll have a totally different tap room. Oh, yeah. yeah. You might be the new owner. Oh, yeah, totally. <laughs> That'll go over well. Yeah, Brian's right. taking yeah. over things. <laughs> Due north. <laughs> do something. Yeah, do something. <laughs> that, that's even a better name, though. <laughs> just do something. Do something, brewing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just do it. So we were, dude, this is, I'm, I'm so, I was so excited for this episode, like the minute I knew Brian was going to be on, because I know what, I knew what it was coming. <laughs> we're going to be off the walls. Oh, of course. This thing's coming off the rails already. Oh, yeah, yeah. So we're here at, at Do South in the, in the back in the air conditioned tap room, drinking some delicious Do South beers. So Brian, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw the bone to you here. Awesome. Kind of tell us what you do at Do South and kind of how you got started and, and, and kind of like the history of Do South. So, so my official title is regional director of sales, but um, at Do South, we all have to wear a bunch of different hats. So I like, I like to be like the, the outside market, you know, uh, ambassador to that degree. Uh, sales is really, and now I'm getting seduced by the lovely Kara. That's awesome. Kara's uh, hopping <laughs> on. <laughs> uh, but no, uh, uh, my, my official title is regional director of sales. But I mean, a lot of us, we do wear the hat of ambassador when we're out in the market. We all love our brewery. Uh, we do call it our brewery. We are a team. We are a family. Um, origins of Do South start like any other brewery. Um, you know, uh, ours is just a little cooler because a guy went out one day to make a beer for his wife. Um, Mike Hawker, owner of our brewery, our captain. Uh, went out one day, his wife Jody was allergic to sulfites and wine, so he went out to go get a home wine kit from a hobby shop. And uh, to, to our benefit, to all the employees that do South's benefit, the guy behind the counter said, hey man, you don't want to learn how to make wine, you want to learn how to make beer. Um, so Mike started making beer uh, on his back porch. Um, famously told me that he dumped more beer than he drank. Which, I mean, I'd like to see what that dude was dumping, because uh, I would have jumped on board much sooner than that, uh, than, than I did back in 2012. But uh, dumped more beer than he said he sampled, but started winning some contests uh, throughout the state of Florida. Um, famously at uh, Havana Hideout right here in Lake Worth, Florida, Category 3, uh, won a bunch of times. Uh, but the beer that really kind of started our brewery was the Caramel Cream Ale. Um, it's a cream ale. We load it up with a ton of caramel malt. We age it on vanilla, but twas not always so. Uh, that beer was brewed a hundred times for Jody until she said that's the beer that, you know, 
that I like. Poor and Mike. She likes it. God, vanilla um, would be back, yeah. yeah right? our, Just throw vanilla. Poor guy, it'll be yeah. good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the thing is, I mean, you know, any of you dudes who have a girlfriend or a wife, you know, it's she tells you no 99 times. It's like, do you really want to keep going after it? Um, <laughs> he kept going after it, and she finally said, yeah, dude, that's the beer. So, yeah. um, we're, we're She grateful. sounds like an incredible woman. <laughs> hey <laughs> No, jo- Jody's awesome. Uh, no, but to that end, um, you know, that's the beer that really kind of started the brewery. Um, I, I, in a lot of ways, I like to call that beer uh, Fisher Price, my first craft beer, because it's kind of turned people from the Miller Lights and the Heinekens and all that other stuff of the world to a different palate. Um, you know, it provides that sweetness, but it's unoffensive, rounds out super dry, gives a little bit of vanilla, rounds out, you know, just awesome. Very food friendly, uh, lighter than you. There's a burden here. What's that? There's a burden here. Oh, no, it's, it's someone laughing because someone drank Windex. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Who knows? Lots of crazy things happening at Do Cell. This, this bang bang room. Tomorrow gets nuts. we're drinking acid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's uh, the hazing ritual for the new brewers. They take the acid clean shot. Yeah. You know? Little star sand. Yeah. Little star sand. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> With a little. No, but um, I mean, since then, I mean, breweries doors opened um, in May of 2012. Got a lot of people in the joint. We didn't know what to expect. Uh, we tried to tell people, like, hey, man, it's a brewery. And people were still coming up and be like, hey, man, two Heinekens, two rum and cokes, and uh, where's your menu? Uh, doesn't exist. You know, uh, <laughs> the menu is right here. It's roasted cocoa stout, it's honey vanilla weed, it's category three IPA. You know, and caramel cream ale. Deal with it, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Deal with it. Yeah. I, I, was, I was telling people before, like, so, um, you know, are they going to have, like, martinis or anything? Like, like no, man. There are um, eight beers on draft. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man. That's it. Nah, cause. That's what you need. Yeah. So when, when did you guys kind of open at this location here? So uh, this particular location uh, was on our radar in 2011. There was another one close by that was the initial uh, initial have another cat five brian uh the, the, the initial, <laughs> the initial uh, home of due south but it didn't really kind of work out this space was a sure. little bit better um and uh, one of our one of our old employees adam uh walked in here the day that like mike was walking around trying to figure stuff out yeah. begging for a job he's like hey man if you're ever looking for someone my name's adam love to work in your tap room when it opens and that was in 2011 right um city of boynton beach at the time uh, didn't know what to expect with breweries. There was some talk that it was going to bring some weird people into town. Um, it did bring weird people, but it's beer geeks, uh, and we're a different kind of weird. We, <laughs> you know, you know, uh, not spend money on ramen noodles, but spend every dollar that we have on rum barrel aged Mariana <laughs> Trench. So, uh, yeah. So I mean, that's guilty. The pe- not yeah. that we just did that. <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's the kind of crowd that that we brought to Boynton, and and you know, since that time, uh, since that we opened here. Uh, two more facilities just opened up within our backyard. So um, you're kind of seeing like the Boynton Beach Beer District. And uh, to us, that's cooler than anything. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, you're leading the way in, in creating that market down here. And it's really cool. Well, I mean, again, Palm Beach County is a different animal, man. You know, mm-hmm. it's, um, you know, we th- there's a lot of people who live here full time, myself included. But I mean, you know, anybody uh, from from November on, it's basically French Canada and Boston yeah. and New York in this in this territory. So. Um, it's really kind of neat to see those people gravitate to our brewery too. You know, Absolutely. you have the locals jumping on board, but then, you know, but I mean, it, no one really knew what to expect, you know, back right. in that time too. Yeah. yeah, sure. So what is your output, um, you know, barrels and, and whatnot? So, uh, annually we're, we're looking at about 7,000, 8,000 barrels annually. Oh, wow. Last year we did just a little above 6,000. So we're looking to do a little bit more this year. Um, obviously that's, you know, a distribution thing as we continue to grow, we're looking at other areas to kind of branch out of, uh, Mm -hmm. currently our footprint is Jacksonville down to Key West, uh, parts of Pennsylvania, but, um, there's some other States that have expressed some interest in due South. Uh, I care not to say at this time, because, wow, don't care to say at this time. Um, <laughs> no, he, broke, he broke it, he broke it out it. on there us. There he goes. Here well, it comes. Well, I mean, you know it's going to happen at least one point in this. Uh, but, no, I, I care not to say at this time. But uh, there are some other places outside our current network that really express a lot of interest in us. Um, I, you know, and I think we have the, the perfect brand for that, for, for people to get into craft beer, but they continue in it with a, with right. a particular right. Yeah, style. Right, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's good to hear that other states are coming to you guys saying, hey, we're interested in having kind of your product in our community and, are, and very supportive of that. Because right. Florida's kind of a hassle for distro reasons to, like, 
trucks have to like kind of go down and come across and go back up and we well, would get a lot of things that other states get plenty of. Well, I mean, you know, not a lot of people ordering oranges year round. You know, you got to get true, on a truck yeah. somehow. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, if a dude wants to come pick up beer, that's cool. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So, um, kind of what are your kind of uh, year rounds and kind of what are some of your like specialty beers that you guys do? So, I mean, our, our year round brands, our year round beers are, are beers that we're really proud of, really have a lot of uh, energy behind and stuff that the dudes in our brew house and, and guys out in the market are drinking all the time. Obviously, the caramel cream is the lead dog. Mm-hmm. Um, again, cream ale, Fantastic. tons of caramel malt, five yeah. percent alcohol too. I mean, a lot of people like to think that you know a darker beer is sometimes associated with a higher alcohol beer, and that's not the case with that one. Right. Uh, it's five percent and rounds out dry. I mean, mm-hmm. providing that sweetness, very food friendly, especially with barbecue. Um, nothing commercially like it too. I mean, when I'm when I'm talking to people about that beer in particular, they go, "Well, what's it like? Is it like a Yingling? Is it like no? There's." Dude, I couldn't tell you a beer that yeah. this one's like because there's nothing like it. Um, it's the old dirty bastard of beers. Yeah, there's, no, <laughs> there's, no, <laughs> there's no father to its style. But, uh, no, I, that, that one's the lead dog. And, again, uh, I, I can't find anything in comparison to it. Yeah. Um, and it's just an animal. Uh, Category 3 IPA is actually creeping up on caramel for overall sales, which is really kind of neat to see. Um, we'd like to call that one a Florida-style IPA. It's all of 6%. Big hop flavor up front. Rounds out with a good residual sweetness and finishes dry. You're going to see that as a common theme with the Due South beer, with that dry finish. Yeah. It's kind of what we're going for. You know, it's kind of our thing. If, if there's any staple to what we do, it's that dry finish. You're not going to have a lingering sweetness. You're not going to have that lingering bitterness. You're not going to feel like the hops that we're using pulling the enamel off your teeth or the treatments that we're using are, like, super artificial. It's that dry finish that lets you know, like, there's some more stuff in that glass. Yeah. Keep going and then mm-hmm. buy another one. Yeah. And then for me, buy another one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, Cat 3 is, is one of those beers that people, especially in Palm Beach County, more so than anywhere else. I mean, you, you get to Orlando and Jacksonville and, you know, uh, parts of Miami, Dade and Broward. You know, you don't see a whole lot of Cat 3 on taps. But in Palm Beach County, you'll find that beer. Uh, throw a rock, we'll hit 10 places from here that are carrying wow. it. It's, it's our other, you know, our other core brands that you'll see a lot more frequently. Uh, next one in the lineup is the Craft American Lager. Um, again, we're in South Florida. Um, you know, we have winter probably 30 days, possibly 45 throughout the year, and that's when people bring out those dumb space heaters, you know, wasting, <laughs> yeah. wasting propane because it's 65 degrees outside. Yeah. Like, come on, man. You have no it's idea. So cold. <laughs> you have no idea what I deal with oh, with the oh. space heaters. Oh, yeah. It's and 73, and I'm wearing a sweatshirt and jeans. Can you bring it out? No. No. <laughs> no, your house is probably this temperature. How about you enjoy this <laughs> right? for the little bit of time that you have it? Yeah. I'm like, You're I'm out in like a t shirt and jeans and I'm like comfortable and they're freaking out because it's, it's 65 <laughs> degrees. I have one fleece that says Do South and I get to wear it 15 days and there's not a day that I don't wear it. Of course, <laughs> you gotta. You wear yeah. the shit out of that. Listen, right? if it's, if it's yeah. 80 degrees, I'm still wearing that bitch. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm it out, but uh. It's the last day I could wear it. <laughs> yeah, sorry. See you um, next year. But again, Craft American Lager, I like to say it's like a blend of a German Dortmunder and a German Pils because with that beer, you get that big honey sweetness up front. You get that great hot bitterness. And then that dry finish with a lingering kind of like biscuit on the, on the back end there. And that beer is only 4.7. So, I mean, that, that lower ABV, that great hot bitterness, basically what we're trying to replicate with that beer too is, um, you know, those, those Euro lagers. Sure. Um, when they get to this country, you know, you think like the Bitburgers and Radaburgers of the world, um, additives, preservatives, stuff to keep it fresher longer. By law, they have to do that before they send it here. So what we're trying to do is replicate that feeling. Because, you know, beer is basically, you know, triggering some sort of emotional thing. Yeah. It's, it's a very, it's a very, you know, uh, communal beverage. You know, mm-hmm. it's, we're sitting here drinking beers. Right. Uh, if you're drinking beers by yourself, you're still not drinking beers alone because you'll remember the time you had a cat five with somebody or, or you know, whatever. But right. uh, what we're trying to replicate with that craft American lager is, you know, that feeling when you're walking into that German brewery and having that beer and how euphoric it is, you know, yeah. like, there's nothing quite like that. So, I mean, when you get a craft in your hands and you actually drink it, it's the way that beer's supposed to be. You know, lager's the most consumed beer in the world. So why not have it with flavor? Why not have it with a little bit of body? And why not make it taste really fucking good? Yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's what we're going for with that beer. When that beer, when we first made that beer, um, the guys in the brew house couldn't get enough of it. 
I mean, I, I would come in here. I was all jazzed up like my first week. I'm like, all right, guys, what are we doing? You know, having beers. It's beer 30. Log, logger and, day. And I'm seeing logger, 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 logger. I'm like, dude, you know we got Cat 4 on, right? Like, yeah. logger, 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 logger. And I'm like, all right. Shit. I'm like, am I, the, am I the only dick who has a snifter or Cat 4? And then they gave me shit for having a snifter or Cat 4, so there's that. Yeah, then you, <laughs> then you got to go full size I, on well, it, you know? Well, I mean, club glass is a must if you're going to, you know, be doing something. But, uh, no. Um, we love that beer. I love that beer. Um, it's great for the porch. It's great for the football game. It's great for tailgating, but it's also great to just sit around and have a beer. You'll, you'll find a lot of people, too, are gravitating to that Craft American lager as well. Your Miller Lite, your Bud Light people. Uh, the cans are really, uh, they're, they're flying, um, especially at Total Wine and Whole Foods, more sure. places. Sure, yeah. Yeah, 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 I mean, and, and here, too. Um, it's light, refreshing, easy drinking, I mean, for a state that has nothing but summer. Um, and then the Coup de Gras, I like to call it the crown jewel of the Due South uh, portfolio. Um, it's a beer we're really proud of. Uh, it's a beer that I will put up against any beer in the country. I said it here first at the At The Bar podcast. <laughs> um, category 5 Imperial IPA. Awesome. Um, so awesome. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's easily one of the best double IPAs in the country. I know I'm biased in saying that, but please, if you have a Cat 5, tell me which beer is better than that. Yeah. You, you can't. Uh, well, stylistically better than that. Because um, there's some great beers in the world. I don't want to. I don't want to say Cat Five is the end all be all. But Cat Five is the end all be all. Um, <laughs> for the, the dippers. Yes. For, but for, it's so good. Um, yeah. That beer is all of eight five, but does not drink that way. You have tons of grapefruit, tons of citrus, but that dissipates. You get a wave of malt, which is not really indicative of that style. It's that big residual sweetness. Rounds out with like a little bit of pineapple. And that finish with, like, grapefruit and citrus and then dry, boom, done. I mean, there, I'd like to sell that beer in six packs, but if we did, people would text ex-girlfriends like it was going out of style. Uh, I mean, <laughs> Everybody would be getting in trouble. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, it, really yeah. is, it, it really is one of those things that, you know, the four-pack is perfect. I'd like to say Cat 3 is my football beer. Cat 5 is when my football team is playing, like, shit beer. Yeah. Because I'll just forget the entire cycle. I, I would need a lot of Cat 5 as a Giants <laughs> fan. <laughs> well, that, well, yeah, we're, we're sharing a brain here. Yeah. <laughs> four-pack goes a long way, man. Uh, but, but no, but to that end, um, all in all, just a, a tremendous beer. Flavor components are just on point. You're never going to get anything that's too assertive either. And anything over 8.5, sometimes you get that real booziness, you know, mm -hmm. in the yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. You're not getting that in that beer. It's all that hop flavor without imparting a ton of bitterness. Sure. Um, we're really proud of that. 2014, uh, best IPA in Florida, Florida Beer Championship. Uh, other medals that, you know, I, I'd probably mess up the name if I told you one, but I mean, that, that beer is very much ballyhooed. We're very proud of it. Um, so everybody listening, go buy a Cat 5 now. <laughs> I'm gonna. I'm, I'm Darren, actually, what, I'm empty, so I might get one. What beer got you into Due South? Into Due South? Yeah. Um, Maybe the, your first Due South beer. Probably Cat 3. Okay. Cat yeah, 3 is went when Cat 3 on me, Darren Dabs, buddy. <laughs> mine, was, my, mine was definitely Caramel Cream Ale on Nitro. Like, yeah. so Ooh, good. Okay. Just so smooth and just perfect. And Nitro makes that beer amazing, as it does get, for almost every beer. But it makes that beer really incredible. Mine's was a Caramel Cream in the can at Celery City in Sanford. The yes! old label, the gold and the garnet label. Right, the, the cream like, soda deal, yeah. Caramel Cream. What, like, what the hell is that? I go, I'll take one. I'm, we're playing skee-ball or whatever the fuck. It's Whatever the, the I fuck know, it it's is. a shuffle shot deal. Shuffle that damn shot. game. Right, that they really the have there yeah. at Celery City, yeah. And I look at it, I'm like, what is this shit right here? I, mean, I end up getting like three or four of them. Oh, of course, yeah. And then that's when my Do South obsession just like overtook my life. <laughs> and, and that's why every time we've talked about Florida breweries, we say you have to go to Do South literally every single time. Yeah. yeah. And we fight over who gets to claim you guys. So, <laughs> <laughs> like, Literally. And, listen, we're, we're, again, we, I, I, I think I've made this, you know, expressively known before we started. We don't care. I don't want to say what we really said, but, you know, if you guys want to claim us, if both of you want to claim us, we're good with that. <laughs> sorry. Oh, it's already, been, it's yeah. already happened. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. We had a whole episode of 10 Must Visit Breweries, and I got mad because Jeff said, do South. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I, I know you're going to say this, but do South. I'm like, oh, No, I, I left him. I left him for you, you last time. Alki said do South. Alki said do South. I was purposely south. leaving him for you. Yeah. He said it, and I got I, <laughs> I was got like, off. I was like, I'm going to let you have because like, man. I said it the last time that we Literally, did it, and I real. stole it, and you went, fuck. And I, was like, <laughs> and I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. Mike yeah. always picks due south. I, I want, so this time I let you have it, and then Alki stole it from you beforehand. Yeah. And I'm like, 
All right, I guess we all want yeah. New South. Then. Oh my God! And Alki, Alki him, was yeah. picking right in front of him too, yeah. so we get all the way around the table. Mike's about to go, and I know damn well he's gonna say New South. And Alki's like, oh, I like New South, and Mike's like, Fuck again! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can say our name twice, man. We wouldn't get upset. New <laughs> South, New South, New South. <laughs> but yeah, so any kind of plans you guys have in the future that you can kind of share or talk yeah. about i mean there's there's a lot of exciting stuff uh happening with our brewery and, and selectively choose what you can share oh no i mean <laughs> i mean we're, we're we're an open book to a certain degree there's some things that you know i don't want to delve into because we're not really there yet but the, the, there's a lot that i can I, I can't talk about today um i mean it really we're it's an exciting time we're, we're coming into year five we're in year four right now um right. and and coming into that fifth year there's a lot of things that we did not do uh, we didn't really tell the story of Due South. We never really said, you know, who we were, what we're about, why we make the beers that we make, why we do the things that we do. Sure. Why is this beer called Silky Johnson? And why is this beer called, you know, so we're... Silky Johnson. Dude, and that, that beer is no joke. It's a player, Such a good name. It is a player hater to no end. If you're familiar <laughs> with the Chappelle show, there's a reason why that beer is called Silky Johnson. But... Um, <laughs> it, <laughs> but to that end, man. Um, I'm changing it, my name to Silky Johnson. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you ever see the, Ch I mean, I love the Chappelle show. You should make. You this should this make could like be a whole new episode just talking about Silky Johnson. Yeah. <laughs> you should make a, a coffee beer called Coffee Black from uh, from uh, yes. what's a, a semi pro. Okay. Well, <laughs> Andre three thousand. Well, now that we character. now that we put it on the air, I don't know if I could actually full on. Uh, oh, you can take it. I won't say anything. Okay, no sweat. <laughs> no, but, <laughs> I mean it's already done. But I mean, you know, we're we're delving into what we do best, and we're delving into why we make the beers that we do and why we do the things that we do and, and telling our story. We have a really unique story. We have a really unique way of, of thank you, Kara. Um, we have a really unique way of, of, of making our beer and, and how we go about things. So we haven't really delved into that. So there's a lot of exciting stuff coming as a result of that. Um, you know, we're, we're one thing I'm really excited about that we've implemented uh, about a month ago is the dry hop series. Uh, oh, yeah. Fantastic. Hop yeah, series I mean, we're thrilled out of our minds because a lot of people know that they love hops and a lot of people know that you know ooh, me like hops hops and beer good um but a lot of people don't know hop varieties uh i mean there's a select few beer geeks who are like oh i drink nothing but citra or yeah, i drink nothing but mosaic that's so, an expensive hobby if you only drink citra well yeah well <laughs> that's why cat five is 9.99 a four pack friends <laughs> um but but um go, going back to that um every basically six weeks six to seven weeks we're taking uh, our base pale ale that we serve here and um, at uh, for one retailer throughout the county, and we're adding a different dry hop variety to it. Uh, the current one that we have right now is Falconer's Flight 7 Seas, uh, which is a, a blend of seven different sea hops. So I'm going to screw them up. So um, I will send you guys an email, and I'll like send you a voice document. Sure. Like, a, yeah. like just go, Citra. Um, <laughs> but um, it's Miami it's, Brewing. Yeah. Yeah. Citra. Citra <laughs> Cascades. I tell you, no, but it's, it's, it's Cascade Centennial Citra Cluster Columbus. Um, I don't know the other two. Uh, so well, again, well, I'll put it. That in. sounded yeah, like seven. I got yeah, you. no, it's five. <laughs> well, we're close. But anyway, that's that's a blend of that. But the next one might be Simcoe. So every six weeks, it's a different. And and with that series, we're imparting hop flavor without imparting hop bitterness. Sure. So I mean, you're really gonna get like the Mosaic one was one of the ones that really kind of showcased what that what that beer could be. And I mean, stone fruit, grapefruit, citrus, and the Mosaic. With this Falconer's Flight, you're getting a lot of like lemon and lime zest with a little bit of melon. Um, it's the same beer in principle, but that flavor changes every six weeks. And that's something that we're really excited for our fan base and the people that are really into the hops sure. uh, to kind of see. Um, obviously, coming up, um, my personal favorite Due South beer is Category 4 Red IPA. Um, I, I have an emotional connection to that beer. Um, I have an emotional connection to all of our beers, to be quite honest. But Cat Four is the favorite son who gets the extra Christmas gift, you know. <laughs> that dick. <laughs> yeah, uh, Cat Four. He deserves it for crying out loud. He's the yeah. only. Yeah, he's an A student. Um, but no, it's that beer is all of seven point four percent alcohol. Um, the the hop varieties used in part pine, citrus, and on top of that, rich caramel flavor in the in the background there, just unbelievable. It's a wave of flavors that you typically don't get in a in a bigger beer at 7.4. And then again, rounding out dry with, with that lingering hop flavor, game over. Uh, four pack cans, tons of draft going out, um, most of it going to my house. 
I can tell you that with great certainty. Yeah, that well, Jeff, sounds like Jeff something loves I would. His IPAs, yeah. Yeah, red I was. IPAs. Red IPAs are like my thing, especially when they get a little bit higher in ABV. Yeah. That red, like a double IPA, uh, double red IPA or Imperial Red, uh, I love them, and they're they're something that's not done very often and, and done very well often, and um, so I'm gonna grab as much of that as I can myself. Awesome. No, no. Uh, grab a lot. We have a lot going out. Um, and then the 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 uh, last thing of note is do you do do south is expanding. Boom! Um, you heard it here first. Heard it here. <laughs> Breaking news. Breaking no, um, news. No, um, we purchased the building next door, uh, which provides us with twelve thousand more square feet to do our thing. Uh, it's it's great news for our little brewery in Boynton Beach. Uh, it's it's great news to hear that people actually like our beer and like to buy our beer, um, and it's testament to that. Um, that space will predominantly be tap room. Um, the space that we're currently in, including this lovely air conditioned back room, which you guys call the boom boom room. Boom boom room. Um, <laughs> this will now be brewery only, um, which means we're expanding our portfolio, expanding our programs. We're going to be implementing a sour project. There is talk awesome. of a cider project. Um, but yes. again, that that's yes. just talk at the moment. Um, Mike's in love with cider, so you just sold. Well, he, the table <laughs> the table if you're, if you're starting to cider. You got two moms. Happy Father's Day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but but no. That <laughs> uh, it's funny. Yeah. Maybe I was just about to let that sink in just for yeah. a second. If your dad right, drinks yeah. cider, you have two moms. Heard it here twice. <laughs> 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 uh, but no, that that the uh, <laughs> the expanded space provides us uh, the growth that we need to be the brewery who we want to be and tell the story that we want to tell and make the beer that we want to make because we make some damn good beer and we think more of it should be out there. So sure. yeah. yeah. You have any questions, Aaron? No. Uh, You've been quiet. There's a lot of a lot He's of stuff being said. Music to your life. ears. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that we're gonna see more do south. I mean, it's been something I've been trying to push more and more right the the 12,000 square feet that's almost double the space you have now it, right it essentially double, this building right here that we're in is 15,000 square okay, feet okay so yeah very close yeah. to oh, oh, yeah. doubling so it essentially and, doubles our size i mean what's 3,000 square feet right it's just a house it, yeah it's, it's yeah. a house or you know a, a, a million dollar apartment in miami you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah at least yeah. a million no but that's that's and gonna that's be insane brickle. <laughs> <laughs> That's insane. You're going to be able to do a lot, a lot more with that. And, and we're, we're going to be able to bring more people into our space, too. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's always some trepidation. I mean, we get a lot of business in the fall um, because, you know, it's cooler outside. Our, our current space, I mean, when we first opened, there was no, you know, we, we had no idea that, you know, hundreds of people wanted to come and drink beer in a warehouse. You know, we, we barely had tables and chairs for people to sit on. Right. You know, it's, it's as we continue to grow, it's like, wait, people want to hang out here all day? Awesome. Let's yeah. let's give them chairs to sit oh, on, yeah, absolutely. Um, chairs and tables and all sorts of stuff. But in the summertime, I mean, it gets kind of weird, and that's when we start releasing some of our big beers: bourbon barrel aged Mariana Trench, uh, rum barrel trench, and I mean, it's ninety degrees outside and equally as warm in here. So what this does is it gives us an opportunity to provide air conditioning, which is essential in Florida, and have people hang out much longer and actually get more people to the party, which is really right. kind of neat. Yeah, absolutely. So we're going to take a quick break, and we're going to try some of the core Do South beers that I know we've all had, but some of you listening may have not had. So we'll do a and you should. You should. Ding, 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 ding. So we'll Shame. do a, uh, some uh, core Do South beers, and we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. Welcome back. And we're back. And oh. And we're back. Welcome back to part two. And we're back. <laughs> or Do South episode. <laughs> so we have four of Do South is. Do South is. Do Southies. Wow, I thought I was the only one, but here we South, are. The Been South was. Yeah. Trying to hang in there. Or at Do Something. <laughs> do Something. <laughs> South Do Beach Boyton. Um, so we have four of Do South is. Do oh South. Do South. <laughs> Core beers here. So Brian, God, it's not even what drunk. The fuck, <laughs> what the fuck is happening? Oh, all right. that's this is the greatest opening of all time. This I is must where say, it yeah. goes. Yeah, yeah. man, <laughs> shit is getting weird at 7 p.m. on Sunday. I yeah. love it. Yeah. Happy Father's Day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, Dad. Yeah, I haven't hey, called you. Happy Father's Day. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Father's Day. Yeah. Okay, 
So, first beer, Brian, we first have... First beer that we have here, the first beer that I poured for you guys, this is Craft American Lager. And again, going back to what we were saying before, essentially what we're trying to create here is is a, a nice little blend of a German Dortmunder and a German Pilsner, if they had a baby. Um, light, refreshing, easy drinking, big honey up front, with a great hot bitterness following that. Yeah. You get that biscuity sweetness, and then it rounds out super dry. Um I, I defy you to find some a, a, a lager uh, made in, in the state of Florida that tastes as easily and crisp as this one. Yeah. This is very crushable. Yeah. Yeah, but then that aftertaste, like give it like two seconds after you're done, and you get that biscuit again. Yeah. That, yeah. And it's really awesome. Yeah. It's very complex for a lager. Sweetness. And, and yeah. you know, if if you want to talk about you know what what people are drinking today, you think session IPAs. The initial session IPA in in the world of brewing was the German Pilsner. Light, under 5% alcohol, heavily hopped with a great finish. And that's essentially what that beer is. But at the same time, it's cleaner, it's crisper, it's lighter on the palate. It's not dominating any sort of, you know, figure on your palate there, too. You're tasting those hops, but you're also getting a good complexity of the malt there, too. Right. I think this is a lager done exceptionally well and, and, like, creatively different. So and, and you're talking again. I, I referenced it before, but the number one consumed beer in the world. So I mean, you know, there there's people who are drinking lagers every day. People, especially craft beer, you know, peeps or your, your beer geek people, you know. And, and thank you very much, Stone, in 1996 for turning us all on to, to IPAs. But fizzy yellow beer is not for wusses. If yeah. you find a good fizzy yellow beer, man, it could be damn good. And man, it could be freaking awesome. No matter who makes it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Well. Uh, there's a couple people in Missouri that I care not to say are not making that beer up to cold. We don't put corn or rice in our beer. I'll just put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> but you do brew it the hard way. Um, All it, by hand. I'll tell you what. <laughs> it's not bullshit. Uh, making a lager is really damn tough. It takes a lot longer. It, yeah. Well, I mean, we, we cold condition this beer for about 90 days. Uh, that, that adds to the clarity, the crispness of it. Um, the yeast variety of that beer um, takes a long time to attenuate takes a long time to, to fluctuate yeah and and takes a long time to come to final gravity sure. uh it is a very tough style to make and to produce the quality that we do on a regular basis on it um uh you ask joel our our lead brewer um what his favorite beer of ours to make and it's craft lager because it is so difficult to do and i think we knock it out the park i mean look at that beer it's as clean as can be it's as light as can uh, be crystal clear um, yeah, crystal yeah. Clear. and and that's beautiful beer that, I mean, that's, that stuff alone is tough to do, let alone in a lager where, you know, diacetyl loves lagers and bacteria loves lagers. There, there can be some brewing flaws in that beer. You can produce some tartness, some sourness. We don't. Uh, that beer is just ridiculously awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's fantastic. It's really hard, too. I mean, as, if from a brewing standpoint, to take up a tank for that long or to do, you know, to, to do something that takes so long for a style that, the the point of the style is for it not to be overbearing or over flavorful so like it's really fun to put out a quick ale that has a ton of flavor with all these different you know cocoa nibs and and coconut but shut your mouth every every you know every (laughs) brewery has like cocoa nibs and coconut and everything but um it it's a it's a dedication to put out a beer like this and then do it well and it's the beer it's you know we, we were just at bang and banjo and he said you know you go to a brewery and you try their their lightest you know, their lightest beer. And you can judge a lot off of that, you know, in how well that they can do something that there's so little to hide behind. And you will know if the rest of their beers are going to hold up from that. And this is, this is insane dedication to a, a style that you can't really, you can't hide mess ups in. And, and there's a reason why those dudes have the number one selling beer in the world. It's yeah. because of, it's a very difficult beer to make and they've kind of figured out how to do it. Um, I mean, and, and as I told you guys before, we're still kind of figuring out who we are. So to make a lager that good, that clean, that crisp, I... I, I mean, this is beach yeah. beer, you know, golf beer. I mean... But it's also a game beer. It's a, a game tailgate, beer, tailgate beer. beer. It's, Hell yeah. it's a boat beer, for crying out loud. Yeah. Yeah. It morphs. Anything. Yeah, it morphs yeah. into whatever you're doing. And, and again, you know, and the thing is, it's it's got that hop flavor and, and imparting some of that hop bitterness that a lot of people kind of long for in a lager, too. Sure, sure. Yeah. Darren, what do you think? You right. finish yours. My, yeah, I it's gone. Right. Yeah. That's all. Darren, you're like my best friend today, man. He went Cat 3 as his favorite Do South beer. That's Darren's good. like, it's okay. I, no. fin- I finished it in one sip. You know, what, whatever. <laughs> See, uh, like Clearly what? nobody read Randy Mosher's tasting beer. No, I'm kidding. Like we said, it's it's any anytime beer. Yeah. Every day, you can just pull that out of the fridge and drink it and enjoy it. 
I love beers like that that like drink well at dinner and then and you can like and then like you can go out on the boat and drink it in a hundred degree sun or you could be at the beach or you could be on the golf course or you could be you know bowling like any it's, yeah. it's just anything you know and you I can mean, yeah craft and is, it fits. Craft is a great bowling beer too and it just fits like whatever you're doing you're just like all right that, that beer fits right now right you know yeah so, awesome well I'm, I'm glad you guys enjoyed that yeah one. for Thank sure you. uh number two number two the 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 beer that started it all, the Caramel Cream Ale. The beer that took my due south virginity. <laughs> oh, man. Ooh, stop it. We went easy. We went easy. <laughs> yeah. You could have gone Imperial Caramel. It would have been a lot rough. It's really... It's, oh, I, oh, don't even get me started. That's yeah. so amazing. It's really bad that me and Mike are on the same side of the table because when we both get boners, this table's flipping over. Well, the table did. <laughs> I mean, Darren and I Good are sitting there holding our beers up because that side of the table just went up a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> things, things are starting to slide like the candles starting to slide off. hey oh, It's flameless. We're good. The flame. <laughs> It, it, it went out for a second, though. I had to give it all a tap, and now it's back up. Um, so, yeah. Oh, there it goes oh, again. Hey. Um, anyway, Caramel Cream. Again, this is the beer that started all. It's a um, it's a cream ale by design. And, again, our friends in the U.K., while we're so grateful for them inventing that cream ale, we had to make it a little bit more complex and give it a little bit more flavor while still keeping that integrity of that 5% beer. Uh, the caramel malt adds color, complexity, uh, adds a different flavor component. I do have to say because, I mean, I can't tell you how many Whole Foods and total wine tastings I do where people go, how much caramel do you put in the beer? We don't put a single drop of caramel. There's no nougat. There's no candy. Just malt. Yep. This is essentially an all-malt beer until we add the vanilla bean. So uh, that, that caramel flavor is there. It's ever-present, but you still know you're having a beer. Rounding out with a little bit of that vanilla, which kind of offsets a good chunk of that roast from the from the caramel malt, and then that dry finish. I, I defy you to find a beef brisket on this planet that does not pair well with this beer. I do like we're going to have to go through this real slow, Jeff. <laughs> we don't want to get too excited. <laughs> this is a beer that this is like a love making beer. Like yeah. you don't just go through this real quick and say like, oh, it's good, it's this and that. No, you got to make love to this description on this beer. The beer that got me into cream ales is Anderson Valley Summer Solstice. Right, Cerveza Gr Crema. Great. Yeah, yeah. To me, is a fan <laughs> fantastic cream ale. Right. Again, dude. <laughs> Cerveza Crema. <laughs> that to me has a lot of flavor, like and it's like taking that and taking a cream soda. And just kind of like meshing it together into perfection. The, it, the vanilla is just the killer. Kills I mean, it. yeah. And, and again, I, in, a, I, in a good way. So what good. I, what I always tell people too is that a lot of, I mean, what makes us really unique is that we're using vanilla in an everyday beer that we make probably three times a week, if not more. Um, is we're adding vanilla bean. Like it's expensive you, as shit. Exactly. <laughs> if you want, if you want to think of like yeah, someone like. Pain. Avery, they released their Imperial Stout, which is an amazing Imperial Stout, right. but they're adding vanilla bean, and people are going batshit crazy for it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or, like, uh, there, there's other breweries I care not to. You know, I, I love Avery. I don't want to get that across that I, <laughs> I, I, that I don't. <laughs> Edit that out. Um, but no, <laughs> no but, but to that end, yeah, Avery, we're adding, Avery's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Avery's they're good. good. They're good. We're, they're we're, really adding, good. we're adding vanilla to a beer that we make every day, and that's, that's really unique and really kind of neat, and you can taste it. It's not artificial. If you come in here on a Tuesday morning when our dudes are cutting vanilla, when you got brewing going, it's like cereal as you're walking in, and when you come into this room, it's vanilla. Game over. So they actually hand cut vanilla beans Every, in DC in the boom boom room. In the boom boom room, Dude, everything. Like, see, yeah, wow. I mean, they, they put on the weird purple glove. They start slicing up vanilla beans. That's and, that's yeah. so time consuming. That's got to just really suck. I do it for a random. Like, I hate my life. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, these like guys, these guys are making you know 100, 120 pounds of it. So oh, deseeding wow. like four vanilla, vanilla beans is like a huge thing for me. I'm like, I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> well, and, I mean, they're they're cutting them, they're slicing them, they're putting in a big bucket, they're dragging it out of here. The bar top is sticky, but it still smells like vanilla in here. I mean, forget it, dude. I would like the I bar spent top. one day hanging out with an old brewer who was here, and I hang, hanging out on the Sunday just drinking beers and watching football, slicing the vanilla beans, and I was tired. And we yeah. watched a full game. Like, yeah. It, yeah. It's hard work. Yeah. And our, our, work. our guys do it all, all the time. So yeah. There's not a whole lot of shit coming out of a vanilla bean like you think there's a lot there's not like you got to cut a fuckload of vanilla beans to get it. like <laughs> it's a lot and of vanilla that, and, yeah. and again that's a beer that you can get at a total wine right now yeah yeah it's unbelievable i love it or a hole in the wall bar in sanford hey celery city is not a hole in the wall they make the wall. Uh, celery city is sanford, tight as sanford, fuck yeah dude i'm a big fan of celery city there's some hole in the walls where you can find this though in palm beach county <laughs> which 
I, I laugh so hard because I know I didn't make the placement. I know the dude asked for it. So, like, you get dragged to some of these places and you look on a beer menu. I'm like, holy shit, they have caramel cream cans. All right, on principle, I have to buy it now. <laughs> and then introduce myself to this dude to see if he wants Cat 3. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm buying yeah. my product from yeah. you. It's like, hey, hey you dude, want this one? Thank you for buying our beer. I got eight more. <laughs> <laughs> you want some? Yeah, basically. Yeah. Come on, get on, do South Have Frank. you heard of Cafe LA? It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> you know? It's doing great at golf courses. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Who would have known? A great golf course beer. <laughs> Cafe LA. So, uh, Caramel Cream, I mean, just fantastic. It's amazing. Thanks. One of you the know. best beers that you can get in Florida pretty much anywhere. And it's year-round. that's round. hard to it's, get. It's year-round, year exactly. It's not something that's, you know, oh, surprise, tomorrow you can't get it. No, right. it's it's there. Uh, if you've not had one, I, I highly recommend it. it. Absolutely. And especially if you're trying to transition your friends who have not gotten a craft beer yet, that is a great beer to transition them to. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah it's sweet and light. So it's light enough to drink in the sun, but sweet enough that you're not lacking in flavor or anything. It's just, it's, it's really well-rounded. It's a perfect beer for Florida. And, and, you know, it's one of those beers that transitions people to your IPAs, your Imperial IPAs. I mean, people who were coming here four years ago drinking nothing but caramel are today, you guys said it before earlier, bourbon barrel aged Mariana Trench. I mean, that, that stuff, it exists, you know, so. And we got the rum. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> I have the rum right here in my hand. Do you? But where's the rum? So we'll no try it in, this, in the next segment. Okay. So number three. Number three, and wow, serendipity, is the Category 3 IPA. There's um, no way you did that on purpose. What? <laughs> Hashtag what? rolling eyes. What? 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 Why is Cat 3 the third beer? How did that happen? <laughs> um, what a coincidence. So Darren will tell us about this beer. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> now go. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I mean, you could if you'd like. I mean, I'd have no qualms. I just interrupt you the entire time going, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> no you, you, say it, you said it wrong. No. no. It's, it's Florida style, not Florida <laughs> style. No, we like to classify this one as a Florida style India Pale Ale. Again, 44% of all craft beer sold is, is India Pale Ale. So mm -hmm. you got to separate yourself somehow. Um, what we like to do with our beers, and it's no secret, if you look at our tap lineup right now, it's no secret that Due South is loving hoppy beers. Everything that we do is a big and hoppy beer uh, for the most part. We get guff on social media from time to time. There's one time a dude walked in here, and of our 22 taps, like 20 of them were IPAs or some derivative of that. Really? Really, really. I mean, we had Midnight Marauder, Cat 4, Short Bus. I mean, we had all sorts of crazy different IPAs on there. Tap room was never busier. Tap room was never fuller. It was just one dude who's like, yeah, if I bought an IPA, I would have got a total wine. Whatever, dude. Like, we're that's what we do best. That's so, the shit I would say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Jeff, I would have do so. Can you fucking believe they have 20 IPAs yeah. out of 20? Fuck damn, I'm never going there again. Yeah. No, and they were do back. Do suck it. Oh. <laughs> yeah. And that do dude, something. And, yeah. and, and that dude came back. So <laughs> Of course. So yeah. there's that. They come back but, eventually. Yeah. But to that end, uh, Cat 3 brings a great hot bitterness up front. And it's that citrusy, lime, lemon, citrus up front. Um, rounds out with a little bit of that stone fruit and then finishes dry. That sweetness kind of lingers. But, um, again, a very food-friendly IPA. Think uh, Thai food. Think buffalo wings. Think so. Hold on. <laughs> there it is. Yes. yes. I just burped like three times off yeah. mic. Well, he didn't, well you, you were kicking yourself for doing You're it like, off I did, mic. I yeah, did like this. So I was like, right. <laughs> <laughs> Someone had to do it on Mike. <laughs> Might as well be me. I, I, I only will do it if I'm really proud of the one that's about to come that, out. That was, I wasn't then proud of that one. you leaned off in shame. Like, these are weak. These are weak. Uh, I, wasn't, I wasn't proud of that one, but whatever. I'll um, amplify it. But again, we'll but again, just have a bonus section. It's just us having a perp contest. Cat, Cat 3 is, is a, a tremendous hot flavor. Um, I mean, again, this is a great introductory IPA, but at the same time, dudes who, who really or, or dudettes who really appreciate IPAs, this one's really easy drinking, you know. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never had the. I don't think I've had the Cat Three because I don't drink IPAs. Right. But drinking this now, it's like super like floral and tropical, and you get the quick burst in the beginning. It just kind of mellows out and kind of like honeys out a little right. bit. Right. It's and not overly bitter. It's not overly back. bitter. Not, you know, awesome. and, and again, awesome, while awesome. while we love hops and why we love you know the flavors and aromas that hops can provide, 
we're not trying to pull the enamel from your teeth. We ain't trying to pull the taste buds off your tongue. I mean, we've done beer dinners where Cat 3 was the first beer. And a lot of times when you're doing like a beer dinner, it's like, oh, don't give an IPA. They'll never be able to taste anything afterwards. Well, you can. I, I know people who've been here and hung out who've had a Cat 3 and then an Imperial Stout and then, you know, Florida Blonde and can still taste the beer and enjoy yeah, themselves. Yeah. So, I mean, while that's big in flavor up front, it goes away pretty quickly. Rounds out dry. You can't beat that. Yeah, it's, fan- it's awesome. I'm a, I'm a big fan of this single IPA. It's very rare. Very rare. That you like beer at all. That I like IPAs. <laughs> well, and, and, and again, you know, it's... It, it, Whatever, it, Cider Boy. Well, what, 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 <laughs> no, uh, you're the Cider Guy. Yeah, that's, Cider that's, Boy. That, that's IPAs can be pretty scary uh, to people who don't typically like that bitterness. But again, we're not trying to scare people. We want to bring more people to the party. So, What, what do you we, think, Darren? Did you say you like to party? <laughs> I I also yeah. like to party. You like to drink? I like to drink. I drink right now. <laughs> My name's Darren, and I like to party. <laughs> That's not a T-shirt. Next month, I will be upset. <laughs> My name is and, Darren. I and, like to party. And dude, it's glasses and a curly mustache. Game over. Hey man, I got you this rock to solidify our uh, friendship. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks, man. That's the greatest. <laughs> If you guys don't know what we're talking, it's Hot no, Rod. No, the it's movie Hot, Hot Rod. No, it's from Hot Rod. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> we remade your bike. Oh, thanks, man. You're the greatest. Hey, man, I got you this rock. <laughs> oh, sweet, man. You're the greatest. <laughs> no, it's delicious. Hey, Obviously, like thank saying. you, Darren. Did you get to drive me to the hospital for a minute? <laughs> <laughs> that was the best. <laughs> what is it? What's it? Uh, three flaming Dr. Peppers. There is a flavor. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. Okay, anyway, back on track. Back, back on track. track. Thank so, you, Jeff. So, any questions about Cat 3? Darren, what do you think of Cat 3? Yeah, back to <laughs> back what to I back think to about what you it. Think, yeah. Uh, yeah. Honestly, like I said, it's what got me into Do South. And then, obviously, Caramel Cream, you can't go without. But And don't miss out whenever you see Imperial Caramel Cream or any treatment of Caramel Cream. Definitely not. The orange? Well, oh, the orange? You guys, again. shut your mouth. Wait until you get to see some Northern Exposure. That's the sounds bees, sexy. Knees, the dogs, bollocks, and yeah. the rooster's cock. That sounds topless to me. Northern, uh, Northern exposure. exposure. Basically, we take maple syrup and we put a whole hep, a whole bunch of it in caramel cream ale, and it's awesome. Maple, Northern and, maple exposure. anything. It's just called Northern Exposure, yeah. Just make ma- just make maple syrup, alcoholic maple syrup, because I would love that. <laughs> put on my French toast. <laughs> So, Brian, can you guys do that? Alcoholic maple syrup? No. Why? No. <laughs> <laughs> We're pretty good at making beer, man. I don't know about uh, that other okay. stuff here. <laughs> but, yeah, this is awesome. I like this one a lot. Awesome. Super intro, yeah. Um, so, the last one, and uh, I'm sorry it's not four, but I've done. Um, but it's uh, category. Oh, I see what you did there. Yeah, thank you. I caught up. Yeah. So, this is the one, um, again, I said it earlier on, but... I, I will happily say it again. I would put this beer up against any double IPA in the United States of America, the Category 5 Imperial IPA. Um, and th- this is just me being biased. It's not a Due South Company motto. Uh, Brian Tonneson on Facebook, I'm the only other one. There's a little Norwegian boy. That is not me. I am the one next to a Due South snifter. You can friend me and then tell me that I'm wrong, but I'm probably not going to be wrong. Um, so Category 5 Imperial IPA sits at about I hope eight. somebody just fucking goes after that little <laughs> Swedish kid. <laughs> yeah. like, yeah. really hey, another? Dick, that Cat 5 sucks. You're fucking wrong, You're kid. You're fucking wrong, yeah. Brian. No, no I, I'm not. Uh, I, I put this one up against any Imperial IPA in the, in the country. Um, the beer is all of 8.5, but it doesn't drink that way. Um, you get that big rush of grapefruit, that big rush of citrus, it rounds out super dry, but then you get like, a little bit of pineapple on the back end. Um, it, it lingers for a little bit and then just kind of disappears. Aromatically is where you can really fall in love with this beer. The the aromatics are just like, you know, you get that big rush of hops, but you know malt variety is there too. Um, I don't like to say balanced. I don't think beers are good when they're balanced. I think when a beer is perfectly blended together because you're, you're working with a lot of different ingredients there. This is a perfect blend of malt and hops. You know, you're not getting dominated by the hop variety and you're not getting dominated by the malt variety, but you know those suckers are there and you know they're doing their job. Um, you know, the, the hops are up front, the malts are on the back end, and then it dries out. Forget it, man. That's, that's just an incredible beer. It's definitely, the hop is, is a lot more present in this one for me with the grapefruit and like the pineapple 
Yeah, I was like, the pineapple is perfect on the yeah. back. Like, yeah. you said that. I was and like, again, yep. there's there's no pineapple or grapefruit in that beer. It's a derivative of the hop varieties used when they're used. Which is mind-blowing that you get that flavor and not use the fruit that you pick up on. Because most people will add ruby red grapefruit or, right. you know, pi- pineapple chunks. It's, I mean, it almost like, tastes like it's a grapefruit IPA, which is right. insane because it's not. And then you could probably make a really killer grapefruit IPA out of it. But It's pretty, um, it's pretty awesome. It's a, it's a fruit bomb, but it's not. It's like right. it's got the booziness that I love because I, I do like that boozy taste. But it's not overwhelming. I would have put it at eight percent if, if if you hadn't told me it was eight two, eight five, eight five. Eight five. So I would yeah, I would put it right around eight percent if I was just tasting it. But fact checks. It's so good. It, it's just like a perfect double IPA. Like you said, it's it, it holds up. You know, I mean, if somebody put a Pliny the Elder in this on the table right now, I'd choose this over Pliny any day. That is high praise. I'm I will, <laughs> I'm also notoriously not a big a fan Pliny of Pliny, here. but yeah. but. It is it is a well sought after double IPA and it is great too. It's just I don't think it deserves the praise that it gets. But um, that's why I use that as an example. This is to to put it into perspective for the people who love Pliny so much. This beer is better and and it's it's up there with the double IPAs of the world that you try and and, and you can get it year round and you can get it year round. Yeah, I mean yeah, I mean there's Seven Elevens in Palm Beach County. There's a couple places down south that carry it independently. Um, downstairs, stop and shop locations that carry sure. it. Um, unreal the response to that beer but again we we can make a lot more of it yeah world of beer ucf carries it just so you know i i, I well they're one of the best world of beer ucf <laughs> y'all you guys yeah, also got an ocat hey. five too right uh, we've got a yeah. few things yeah you got a few things here and there you're about to get a lot more so <laughs> we, we got we got a few of, of your things and whenever anything comes out we kind of get it every time well every time. <laughs> funny how that works <laughs> they support do south no and, 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 yeah. do south supports us man yeah, that pays sure, our man. bills yeah. they're not hard to sell those kegs so you know oh no Mexican i know i know stand off yeah. when it comes out people come out for that oh for uh, that sure would've, that would have been in the next segment had it not blown out on father's day so no. <laughs> sorry guys i've heard that beer more this weekend than i've had in my entire life the mexican standoff Funky, is it? it did they funky re- said well, it. I, yeah. Did they Johnson. rework the the recipe or something? Change or something? Because somebody said originally so, it was no, a, originally a crazy it was, hot. I, I remember the first year it came crazy out. Crazy hot. Dave said that. Yeah. Uh, banjo. So so, so the the initial the initial Mexican standoff, Baker's chocolate cinnamon habanero pepper. The variable of the habanero pepper is not something you can predict. When right. you start cutting them up, that's when you know. Yeah. So. The first round of Mexican standoff that we started putting out into the market was a round of habanero pepper that was spicy as shit. I mean, burn your dick off. Sorry, <laughs> but it would. The kind where you don't pee when you like, before, right. you got to wash your hands at you're least not, three times. You're not looking forward to go number two after that. But, <laughs> but I mean, with that bigger chocolate and that cinnamon, it just looked like a perfectly blended beer. So, so to that end, um, a lot of people gravitated to that beer. But there were some people who would have it and go, I love the chocolate. I love that cinnamon. That vanilla is just kicking. But damn, that habanero is too much. Right. So then the next round, when we cut open the habanero, it was a little bit sweeter. Um, our thought as a brewery was, how can we put out a beer and then tell people that, you know, well, don't buy this one because it's too spicy, or don't buy this one because it's going to be this. How can we control that? Well, when we decide to make that beer, when we cut the habanero, we'll know. Um, and, and that's kind of how we've rolled with standoff going forward. Sure. So, yeah, the first couple rounds, yeah, that stuff was spicy. But there. It. Yeah, there, there was a, a good chunk of people who love the spice. But there are people who will buy that beer and have eight of them here in the tap room because it's a little bit more mellow. Um, yeah. For our anniversary party, or Cinco de Mayo, I should say, we released a beer called Extra Spicy Standoff where we put in habanero and Trinidad scorpion peppers. And, I mean, I, I can I handle, would love it. <laughs> I can handle some heat. I love heat. I had two sips of that beer. I'm like, hey, dude, you want one? <laughs> you can have this one. <laughs> um, it, yeah. It gets a lot overwhelming. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I get it. Um, so I overheard this while me and Darren were playing um, whatever the uh, shuffleboard game is over at Bang & Banjo. So this is not me, and it's, this isn't blowing smoke up your ass either, but I, I overheard it, and somebody there, and I don't remember if it was Dave or who it was, said, and this was literally this morning, uh, they said, Mexican standoff is the beer that Hunapu was supposed to be. Um, and that's what somebody... Somebody at Funky said that, too. Yeah? Yep. 
So I've I've heard that now. That's, like you said, this weekend everybody's talking about Mexican standoff. I think like at Lauderdale, I think somebody said that too. It's it's they, they ask everybody's us, Where talking are you guys about going it? to Mars. Oh, we're going to Bang and Banjo. They were going to do South. And they're like, hey, have you had Mexican standoff? <laughs> it's a thing Huna wanted to be. So we appreciate that. Oh, that every that, time. That's that's high <laughs> praise. Um, we maybe we should trade trench day for standoff day and uh, <laughs> well what's what's really cool is uh one year uh locally locally for jupiter craft brewers festival um there's an event called field of beers and it's a food and beer pairing thing done inside a minor league park it's one of the best events in the state of florida uh thrillist and all these other dudes called it one of the best events ever but we brought in bourbon barrel aged mexican standoff awesome beer amazing bourbon's there heat is there I'm walking up to work the event. I've got my draft stick in hand. I've got everything in tow. And some dude is walking up. He's got this giant blanket wrapped around the thing. He's, like, lifting it up and going towards me. I'm like, what the hell is this guy doing? Like, moving furniture, like, to where we are? Like, do we have, like, the VIP lounge? It was an ice sculpture of a cactus with a mustache, sombrero, holding a gun. The gun had a beer tube through it pointing out where we could pour the beer. And we were pouring bourbon barrel-aged Mexican standoff through an ice sculpture holding a gun that happened to have a mustache and a sombrero. Nice. That was a cactus. Damn. That was a cactus. <laughs> That's really cool. So maybe on Wednesday I talked to the boss about doing standoff day. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. You, what was the event you were talking about? That's it's, at Jupiter? It's called Field of Beers. And, and it's in the Jupiter it's, Hammerheads. It's at, Roger, it's at Roger Dean Stadium. Yeah, the Jupiter Hammerheads ballpark. Okay, yeah, because I've been. I actually went to that event years ago. Um I don't know if you guys were there or not yet. I don't remember what year that, that it was. That was our first year at Field of Beers with the with the awesome beer yeah. festival. Really great beer festival. Yeah, it's it's one of the and it's intimate. You mm-hmm. know, that's that's the other thing. Cool. So we're gonna take another quick break. Uh, thanks for the uh, core beers, Brian. And it's it's, been, what it's we been, do. been awesome, man. These are all good. Check them out. Uh, and then we're gonna head into some of their limited release, special release, seasonal release. As we like to say in Do stuff. South, as we like to say at Do South, shit's about to get weird. Shit's about to get weird. Shit's gonna get and real weird. So we'll be right back. Yeah. Welcome back, Welcome to, back to another part three, three. 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 Part of the Do South extravaganza. <laughs> extravaganza. Oh, going fancy going now. Fancy. We're fancy motherfuckers right it now. It has been an extravaganza. It, it has been, been yeah. man. I knew, dude, I'll tell you, I was looking forward to this one really, really bad because I just knew that you were going to bring something electric <laughs> to this, and it's happened. I t- it's Jeff, it's, well, you were it's, be it's here. still early yet. Yeah. I said, Jeff, we're going to do South. He's like, wait, do South? He's like, I'm like, yeah. Is Brian going to be there? I'm like, yeah, he'll be there. He's like, fuck, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just, our, <laughs> our show has a way of coming off the rails with you, and it's fun. In I enjoy way. it yeah. in well, a great I mean, way. It hasn't been too weird. Like, Well, yeah. last time, I, I think I, we I talked about pirate. sweaty head, yeah. We talked about, like, pirate parties and, like, you Being, do I, I believe it. I believe and we and actually it. ended up doing a party similar to that. We call it Boats and Oaks as yeah. opposed to Boats and yeah, Hoes. I remember that one. Yep. That one's... Yeah, and um, it was at Box Elder in Miami. We had a bunch of oaked. Uh, age beers. Sure. It was the deadliest catch without the crabs. We didn't run out of gas. We didn't call the Arabs. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a direct line. Yeah, yeah. It was a deadliest. And the that's crabs. a shirt. <laughs> it is. That's like better than any of my Jeffisms. But you, yours is. Well, no, we won't get into that. Mine are always yours just are gross. Just gross. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like today, I'm just I'm taking a shit and I send them the little me shitting bit Oh, good. Like the one with like the guy just sitting right. on a toilet. I just sent him that. Have for you seen the ones of the like high dive swimmers before they hit the water? Their faces, the faces are all fucked yeah, up, yeah. and then they're on the toilet. Yeah, it's the greatest shit I've ever seen. <laughs> uh, I've never seen that. I oh, haven't seen so it. Awesome. I need to see it. It sounds yeah. awesome. Yeah. So let's go into. We have three Do South awesome beers because uh, one we have to drive back to Orlando. We don't get too fucked up. You have to drive back to Orlando. This is also true. I have to fall asleep in the passenger seat. Right. So, With, gentlemen, there there is some coffee in one of these beers, so <laughs> I think we'll be okay. Now yeah. find out which one. <laughs> <laughs> Next, this is like a it's like a game I saw, and except way more South fun. Brewery spotlight, and there's no way we could just end on three. I mean, like realistically, there's what like five or six on tap right now. There's that, there's a lot that we, we have to choose from, drunk. but like easy. Uh, 
Well, I mean, a good chunk of you guys started with the one that I wanted to go with, and then, I mean, there's Rum Barrel Age Mariana Trench, which... We could try that. Let's count it. Everybody can take a sip of mine. Okay, good. I like it. And we'll then, count. Right, so then we can do we that. Have right. we, have we have four. Now we have four. Now we have four. Hurrah. So, Jeff, you want to start with your Rum Barrel Age, because oh. that's been out here the longest. Um, I yeah, prefer to go with that one last, Yeah. Okay. And, and it gets better as it, it warms up. It gets way okay, better sure. as right. it gets warm, because I've had it now right, so warm, it and it's okay. amazing. All right, so Brian, so let numero us, uno. Let us begin with the much ballyhooed, much talked about um, beer that kind of uh, symbolizes what Due South can do as a brewery, and that is the Mariana Trench Imperial Stout. Um, oh my God! What? <laughs> yeah. Um, so this beer sits at ten and a half percent alcohol. There's a little bit of sea salt, a little bit of uh, coffee, a little bit of wow. vanilla bean, um, but all blended together perfectly. Um, the mouthfeel on this beer is not really indicative of most Imperial Stouts. However, the flavor components are all over the place, which is really something that you're looking for in that beer. Um, heavy chocolate up front, rounding out with a little bit of coffee. That sea salt sits in there, and then that vanilla bean takes over. Rounding out with a good residual sweetness. Um, it's a big beer that does not drink like a big beer. It's a very dangerous beer. Um, a little risky. Yeah. yeah. Um, but to that end, people love it. Um, we have a day set typically um, weekend before Super Bowl. I don't know how we always plan it out that way, but it's pretty fucking cool. Uh, <laughs> um, essentially, um, we, we sell tickets, about 500, sometimes a little bit less than that, um, to a day at our brewery. Um, we don't make any money off of it, but it's a nice way to celebrate our fan base to celebrate this beer. Uh, we have bottle sales that day. It's typically unlimited. It's how we operate. Um, and it's a great day to hang out to get some of the best beers in the state of Florida. Um, with 500 people, the lines are never that big. Uh, we rarely do a time tapping on that day. If we do, it's, it's something that you're not waiting in line for forever. Um, lots of great food trucks on that day. And I mean, uh, I'm a little biased here, but I think it's the best beer event in Florida because you're, you're with 500 of your closest friends everyone's chill it's a great thing and the best thing about the beer community is we have a hard out at like six o'clock that day it's from like noon to six right people leave they're not just sitting in a chair like nah dude you know whatever they're out the door and and you know continue the party wherever they want to go be at copper point right up the road from us or or whomever but uh you know it's 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 a pretty cool day but that beer is really worthy of a day like that absolutely yeah it's funny, I would have never thought of sea salt in right. this beer until you said it, yeah. and now when I taste it, because like it almost tastes like a, like an imperial robust porter in right. a way, because it's super roasty and a lot of coffee, and it's it's very robust, um, but it's it's not overly sweet, it's, it's got that thick. stouty, yeah. you know, yeah, exactly, it's not thick, so it's almost a little bit like that, uh, that robust porter would be, um, but that salt cuts it you know it like Correct. cuts through right at the in the middle and i wouldn't have been able to put my hand on it you know i wouldn't have been able to say what that is until you said it and i was like that's it you right. know it's that sea salt in there and again in 2014 that won a gold medal in the florida beer championship for imperial stout and you know how florida is with their imperial stouts to win a gold medal in the state of florida for imperial stout hell yeah um we're, we're pretty happy with that beer um we know our fan base is happy with that beer Bottle sales for that beer go crazy. It's it's brewery only for bottle. A couple kegs go out to distribution here and there, um, but for the most part, this beer is just. It, it really defines what we can do as a brewery, sure. and what our what our the deepest part of the ocean is is the deepest part of what we're able to do. Have you done cinnamon treatments with this? No, we we I mean you know, we don't like to treat trench all that frequently. I know okay. that we did we did a Java trench this this sure. past year. Um, I mean, there's talks of other treatments of it. We do age it in barrels. One dude on Instagram, like, it was so weird. It was like, Cat 4 drops on June 28th. It's a red IPA. And some dude goes, cookies and cream barrel aged trench or I'm never coming back. It's like, that's not even though. the that's, same thing. Though. Yeah, it's <laughs> like, come on, man. What are we doing here? I would love cookies the cookies and, and cream. Yeah, yeah. What eat. Eat some ice cream and have yourself a, uh, you know. Just pour yeah. the beer on your cookies and cream ice cream. Yeah. Game Just over. get yourself some marshmallow fluff and put it in your beer if you want. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you come know? on, man. What Don't do be a get? dick. So, but to, but, but to, to answer your question, there, fluff. there are no talks currently of a cinnamon trench, but you never know. You never we could know, be sitting right. around, like we could be driving somewhere and someone goes, you know, I think cinnamon trench is a great idea. 
and all of a sudden that theory just starts going around. That's how we operate as a brewery, man. We yeah. named a beer after a dude at a rest stop on our way to Tampa one day. It's called Manuel's Dojo. <laughs> And that's maybe a different story for a different day. Manuel probably can do some mean karate dude, moves, though. Dude, yeah. Manuel cannot do a single thing in karate. <laughs> Manuel was all a three foot tall and didn't know how to fill a top. Listen, again. We'll save we, it another yeah, day. <laughs> this, this is another day. When yeah. that beer drops, I will give you guys a shout and tell you about Manuel's awesome. dojo. But the more I talk about it, the more it turns into like an aristocrat's joke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, what do we have for beer two here, Brian? Beer two well, is didn't a beer. Didn't even give me time to finish beer one. Oh well, well yeah. I mean, gentlemen, what are we doing oh, here? Well, yeah. I'm waiting for mine to get a little bit warm. Well, that's, that's so one beer way two. To do it. Um, this came again. This is the the due south way. We were sitting here one day and we're like, you know, batch 500 is coming up, and I and I'm sitting right where you are, and I go, you know what? I think it'd be awesome if we made an imperial cafe au lait. And the boss, the captain, Mike stood up. And I see him run out to the brew house. He goes, hey, Joel. <laughs> <laughs> I see him walk towards him. And I knew exactly what it was. It was an Imperial Cafe Ole. And we started we started talking around about what a good name would be. Jittery Joel. Joel, our brewer, a guy who I love to death. I think is one of the best human beings on the planet. Nicest guy in the world. He follows us on Twitter. He, and he's, I, I mean, honestly, I, I go to places go, are you brew cocky? I go, no, I am not brew cocky. <laughs> but I fucking love that guy. <laughs> yeah. um, Another weird what a story. great name, yeah. Brew Kagi. Yeah, his he's very entertaining on Twitter. No, he's <laughs> he's one of he's one of the best guys in the world, and yeah. and we're we are beyond grateful that he's a part of our team. But he is coffee beer guy. Um, and, I mean, if you if you look at anything he posts, it's always hashtag Team Coffee Beer, and it's usually like a coffee beer that he's drinking or something like that. Or like if he sees like Founder Sumatra Coffee, he'll comment Team Coffee Beer. You know. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it just made sense. I'm like, we should call it Jittery Joel. And we're like, no, let's call it Jolt. J-O-E-L-T. You know? <laughs> but Imperial Cafe Ole just made too much sense. So, <laughs> so ultimately, Joel, you lost. <laughs> yep. right? We were going to do Sorry, it. I mean, there's already a beer named to. after him. And, again, that's a different story for a different day. Um, I will just say One Night in Ebor is pretty awesome. <laughs> uh, but uh, with Imperial Cafe Ole, um, you have a beer that's just about 10% alcohol. So it's like that 9.6, 9.7, just about 10. Right. Um, locally roasted coffee from Argyle Coffee Roasters in Fort Lauderdale are the beans that we use for this one. And it's a custom roast that they make for us. So essentially what you have is a heavily coffee aromatic, Ooh. heavy coffee on the palate, and then that big residual sweetness. This beer is a little bit more thicker on the palate than, than most of our Imperial Stouts are. Uh, that's it. Pardon. Including Pico Duarte and some other ones. This beer's got tremendous flavor. That sweetness sticks to the side of your tongue. That vanilla bean just kind of takes over, but heavily coffee dominated. You know, it tastes Ooh. like it sits almost soft. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, that, that coating, that vanilla, co it, a beer that you would expect to, like, really get you in the mouth, it sits so soft and, like, gentle on your palate. That yeah. You wouldn't expect that. You wouldn't expect that beer to be almost 10% alcohol. Yeah. And again, not even a little bit. And that's, like, and that's, a, that's scary. Trouble beer. It's a very tough thing to do in brewing yeah. is to make a beer with that much body and that much alcohol presence and not have it be uh -oh. that. Th We're oh, getting stalked. It's about to get weird. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it, it, to make that beer seem like it's only, you know. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Imperial. Ale. You want to talk about it? Yeah. Papa has a few things to say Kara about Imperial wants to Cafe talk Ale. about, yeah. Cafe Ole is delicious. Imperial Cafe Ole. Imperial Cafe Ole is just on another level. <laughs> Can you talk to the microphone, please? Yes. Damn, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Militant. Oh, excuse me, right here. <laughs> so Cafe Ole just brings it, the Imperial style just brings it to another level, and it just gives it that extra burst of what it needs. Um, we love the the bitterness and the sweetness that it brings to uh, do South here, but it's delicious and you should try it. Well said. That's a t-shirt. Well done. <laughs> All of that on the back of a t-shirt. <laughs> the whole description. <laughs> you mean, you mean talk right here. <laughs> <laughs> Can you talk in the microphone, Darren? <laughs> so yeah, uh, Darren, what do you think of the uh, Imperial Cafe LA? I I love regular Cafe Ole, and this is the first time I'm having Imperial Cafe Ole, so it's even awesome. better. Me too. It, I, it surprised me with the vanilla sweetness. I wouldn't sweetness. have thought it was And again, 10%. you know, we're, we're, yeah. we're, we're four years old. You know, we're, we're coming into our fourth year, into our fifth year, and to be at batch 500, meaning that we've made, you know, 500 rounds of beer, and for this to be it, game over. Yeah. Yeah. Nail on the head. 
It's fantastic. Nail on the head. Ding. <laughs> really good. Yeah. yeah. Incredible beer. I would totally golf with this beer. <laughs> that, it's, it, yeah, this oh, yeah. is a golf it's, beer for yeah. sure. Inside joke. It's, it's an inside joke. Um, <laughs> or, you know, uh, a golf course locally drinks more Cafe Ole on the golf course than Rattler. So, apparently these guys found it very funny. Yeah, listen, you love your life, Rattler, but I love my Cafe Ole, so I agree with you I guys. I do love Rattler. I'm upset. It's okay. I, I didn't pick it. But I'm, I have one in front of me, so there's that. Does your dad drink Rattler? No, because oh, if okay. you, no, if you if your dad drinks lat Rattler, you have a dad and a mom. If your dad <laughs> oh. drinks cider, you got two moms. moms. <laughs> Mike's gonna eventually be that second mom <laughs> <laughs> to an unfortunate that is, young that is kid. A sitcom. Feeling curly. In My Orlando, two moms need like, Mike. Da 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 da. An unfortunate man that he's he's gonna be raising this poor kid that has two moms. I'll be the best parent ever. He won't, Kids say, do. he won't gender it because he's Kids do. the best mom ever. Kids do love you. But what bathroom does Mike go in? <laughs> oh. All of them. Because I have a beer and I don't give in a In front fuck. of both. <laughs> <laughs> Not in them, just in front. Oh, by I the- couldn't make it right. I'm sorry. <laughs> By the time that you're a parent, there'll probably be uh, those uh, unisex bathrooms in every place you go into. Yeah. Well, so most places have, like, yeah. both men's and women's. So anyway, Brian, what do we got for number so, three? So, okay. So, again, I told you shit was going to get weird, right? It's about to get amazing. It's about to get a lot more awesome. So, yes. um, again, this is batch, I want to say, 100. Uh, so going back to, you know, kind of commemorating our batches, um, this is Imperial Cafe. Oh, sorry. This is not Imperial Cat. Have another beer, Brian. This is Imperial Caramel Cream Ale. Yes. Yes. I can die happy now. <laughs> so basically what we do is we take our flagship beer, the Caramel Cream Ale, and we turn it way up. So we get... <laughs> I thought he was trying to reach <laughs> that, my nipple or if something. If this was a video there. podcast, that would have been the greatest <laughs> portion of it. Darren just reaching <laughs> over and pulling on the... Oh, we're, at, we're, at Bang and Banjo. we're at Bang and Banjo earlier, and, and me and Darren are sharing a mic. And instead of just taking the mic and turning it, he just, like, gets up on my shoulder and just like, leans <laughs> over and, like, leans on me. And I'm like, I'm like wait, what, what, what's going on here? And, I, and so I just look at him, and I'm like... Just put your arm around <laughs> and, just, and just turn the mic like like six inches. Just like here you go, man. Like, That's so great. I just wanted to be close. But man, I, I I wish people could have seen that. That was amazing. <laughs> that was so weird. Mike what has this fuck? little dealie on his pocket, and Darren My just PFG, bro. It just pulled PFG. it. Yeah. PFG. PFG. <laughs> anyway, so Imperial. So getting back to Imperial Caramel Cream Ale. So um, again, I will go back because I got distracted and I've had a beer or two. Um, so we have. Our, our Caramel Cream Ale, which a great beer on its own. This beer is turned way up with the Imperial version. Um, it's a lot more caramel malt. It's a lot more vanilla. But again, I think they both kind of balance themselves out. And, and you get a perfectly blended interpretation of what this beer can be. Um, it's all of 8% alcohol. But again, does not drink that way. Ha ha. Nope. Ha ha. Getting us. Um, um, good residual sweetness. But that dissipates. That vanilla just kind of takes over. Sure. Um, you know, it lingers for a bit. Um, this beer is a little bit more suspect to treatments versus others in our portfolio because it's so versatile and because it's so different. Again, I can't tell you anything commercially like it. I can't find a beer that's anything like this one uh, available in the United States or Europe because I did sell European beers for, for a short time in my life. I know. I've, um, heard, I've heard of those stories. Oh, those are fun Hanging stories. Hanging out with Ben and, uh, ben and Megan. Oh, oh yeah, hey. Uh, <laughs> Bitburger had to get sold somewhere. Um, <laughs> uh, but, but to that end, uh, just an amazing beer. Uh, very smooth and not necessarily uh, something that you could uh, anticipate being in a beer. This beer is easily one of Mike's top ten favorite beers of all time. Are you using easily. the third person? Wow, you went third person. On I went third person. <laughs> Right from everybody. The mic says. I skipped the whole boner moving the table and just went to straight, just cramming my pants. <laughs> like, it's that good. You skipped the whole step there. I did, yeah. I, it, I didn't even have time to get a boner. Just I mean, that's a ground rule double then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's not even a base. Yeah. It was. It, I, I tried it, and I, I like Mike looks over at me, and I'm just like eyes rolled in the back of my head, excited that this beer exists. It's, yeah. I love it. And that we're having it right now. I'm literally, I'm, I'm going to savor this one. It's Do a good it. one to savor. This is one you make love to. Slowly. 
so what, what's awesome about that beer again on its own it's awesome but what we're able to do with it um, to impart different treatments to it um, just makes that beer so much better. We add uh, Argyle Coffee Roasters coffee beans to it, sure. a little bit more vanilla, and we have a beer called Caramel Latte, which imparts a big coffee flavor up front, rounds out sweet, and that vanilla just kind of takes over. It's almost like a beer Starbucks. Uh, it's it's the best way to put it. Um, oh we also have had the, that earlier, and it was so, amazing. So the much good. ballyhooed, much talked about. I get emails about this more than I care to admit. The maple orange imperial caramel cream. Yep. So I take it back. That good. beer. Yeah, is the top ten. This beer, is pretty much the and same thing. And what's what's crazy is we have not canned that beer since 2013. We've released it in smaller distribution in 2014, 2015. So unbelievable. Yeah, it's um. I that mean, that beer is a top ten beer. It's easy. It, I mean, at Extreme Fest in 2013, that beer really uh, kind of solidified that Deep South can make extreme beers. Right. And I mean, uh, the, the cans alone, unbelievable. And what's crazy is. While, while it's an 8% beer and while it's, you know, something that, you know, you think of beer as liquid bread, something that stays fresher, uh, not not as long a, as most, you know, right. uh, commercial beers. We had a two-year aged one, uh, American Craft Beer Week, last year. And holy shit, was it awesome. Um, that, that orange mellowed out completely, but it was still there, still providing that acid. Um, you know, the maple syrup kind of dominated. That sweetness kind of dissipated a little bit. Oh, my God. It was so awesome. Um, so oh. next time we – well, we do um, – occasionally we'll bottle that beer here at the brewery. It's a brewery-only release. But uh, keep your eyes peeled for cans coming up in 2016, 2017. Oh, my God. <laughs> if those cans release anywhere, I'm buying as many as I can. I'm going to hold on to them. We also failed to mention about our, uh, the other one that I was forced to have. And I'm glad that I was forced to have it. Wow, the churro. Uh, oh, the churro Holy cabra. cabra. Balls. So I'm, I'm so grateful that you were forced to have one. Yes, me yeah. too. Sorry I, that you had a really good beer, Derek. Well, my, well, my, <laughs> well my, my thing was initially I was like, I just saw a sign that says caramel latte. I want and I that. got the caramel latte. Yeah, and he's just like, so good. But did you see that they have this churro cabra? I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so um, it's a little bit of cinnamon, a little bit of sugar. Uh, a little bit of coffee into the Imperial Caramel Cream. And ladies and gentlemen, you have yourself a liquid churro. It is awesome. And I do love churros. So those are both treatments of caramel cream then? Yes. Imperial Caramel Cream. Yeah. Okay. There's, there's another Lots one. Lots you can do with that. There's another one I get, to, uh, I, I get harassed about. I shouldn't say, you know, whatever. I, I walk into the, some of these craft beer bars uh, from Jacksonville down to Key West. Before I can even, you know, get out. Hey, I'm Brian from Do South. I, it's peanut butter, pepper, imperial caramel cream. You know, no, that's not my name. I'm Brian. That's a, that's a <laughs> mouthful. Pleasure. Yeah, I'm that's Brian. a mouthful right there. So, um, first time I saw this beer, I don't know. I know it may have existed prior to my existence in Do South, but we did a 42 beer tap takeover at uh, Tap 42 in Fort Lauderdale in February of awesome 2014. Awesome bar, yeah, really cool bar. spot. Awesome people too. I mean, easy people to work with. It's 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 unreal. But um, we did a forty-two beer tap take over there, and the hit of the night. First of all, it was Craft American Lager. That was the first beer to kick, and we had two half barrels there. Impressive. So, Wild. Yeah, which was, I mean, well, it, the lower ABV stuff my, w- is usually the first to go. It's usually the one people drink the most of. Well, the thing is, on that night we had bourbon barrel aged Mariana Trench, chocolate Mariana Trench, coffee Mariana Trench, peanut butter pepper Imperial caramel cream. Uh, Calling all cars, uh, uh, maple bacon. Calling all cars. I mean, I we do had like calling all cars. We had I completely forgot about that one. We had we had a myriad. We had a we had <laughs> a myriad shit. of Holy like, shit. we had a myriad of these, we had a myriad of these crazy beers. We had two half barrels of Craft American Lager, and the boss walks up. He goes, "How's it going, man?" I go, "Dude, guess which beer kicked first? He's like Trench. I go, "No." He goes, it "Wasn't Trench?" I go, "No, dude, it wasn't Trench." He goes, "Cars." I go, "Not cars. Cocoa cars. Wasn't coconut cars." I go. He goes, I, I, I don't know. I have no idea. I go, Craft American Lager. He goes, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, That's it was insane. Yeah, it's insane. I mean, that, I mean, good, good, good insane. But that, but yeah, peanut but. butter, pepper, imperial caramel cream. Um, it's a ton of peanuts. It's a little bit of pepper, and basically, it's like liquid Thai food. Black pepper, or like, like pepper, spicy pepper. Really, spice with peanut butter. Peanut. Um, it's almost like a chili, well, not, not like a butter, peanut butter peanut. chili. Dude, think think like peanut. 
Think like pad thai. Oh, pad thai. Pad thai. Think like five star pad thai. Not, not peanut butter, peanut. Peanut makes a lot well, more sense. Well, we call it peanut sense. butter because it's so much fun to say. <laughs> it just makes peanut. it more fun. <laughs> but it's a shit ton of peanuts. Uh, yeah, it's, so that's like, yeah, it's like pad thai. Yeah. That sounds like delicious. Like five star pad thai because it's spicy, but sweet. sweet. Yeah. I'm totally so, into that. That beer on its own, though, however, awesome. Amazing. So, so what, why, don't, why don't we see in that? Um, <laughs> so uh, so well, just so I know, Wob, you see, I've got a keg, right? So remember, remember, <laughs> remember our friend Christopher? I got some in there. He's oh. sending up your oh, way for sure. Oh, yeah. Mr. Walken Mr. over Walken. there. All right. He exists. <laughs> I'm over there. Got kegs inside of me. You guys should make a peanut butter and jelly beer. Oh, yeah. It's never been done before. This man's just loving on the peanut butter and jelly lately. I, I fucking love some of these <laughs> peanut butter and jelly beers. I don't care. I know they're cliche, but so is oh, everything dude. with cocoa nibs or coconut. coconut. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, the thing is, it, it always goes in waves. It doesn't man. make I them. Mean, it doesn't make them oh, bad. Right, right now, coffee IPAs. I mean, yeah. No, I mean, coffee. Yeah, why yeah. is that coming back? That was like a thing a year ago. No, but just in the past month, it's been. A I know huge they're like they're like trend. coming back, and like session IPAs are all but gone. They disappeared. Mm. Well, I so. I you have you have some of these you have some of these um, you know national brands that are like hey wait a minute we're three we're three years behind the curve it's our turn to make a session IPA yeah um, but essentially um, you know it, right now it's it's these big heavy treatments that a lot of people are are really digging um, uh, someone in our brewery once said people won't buy a beer unless you put your dick in it these days. Um, I think it's one you know, of the best a, quotes of all time. A dick yeast beer, though, would probably sell. Right. I mean, hell, there's that one that uses... The one in Europe? The Czech? The Czech beer? Which one's that? The, the one that uses a Czech supermodel's vagina yeast? Yes. Yeah, like fuck that. One. that. I'm sorry. I <laughs> <laughs> see what you did there. Hey, wait. No. <laughs> Hold on. Hold Hello. on. <laughs> it's not her vagina yeast. It's her essence. That's the way they market it. Her essence is in the beer. Uh, they're literally scraping her vagina and putting no, it in the beer. They took a no. sample and they're duplicating this. Oh, no. it's they're using her Come yeast so and they're putting it in the beer. If they're saying essence, it's steam. Whoa, it just got bright. Woo. Good thing we didn't Sorry, have gentlemen, video I'm this hideous. On. I'm so sorry. <laughs> the, the ugly lights came on. Yeah. Um, no, and then there, what was the other one that I said? There was another one that was like absurd that they made. I'll think of it in a second. But anyway, yeah, there's one that from the check that has a it's a vagina. Yeah, I heard about that. I've heard oh, oh yeah, that. the other one is um is whale vomit oh, uh, beer out of Australia, and uh, there's this uh, the whale vomit that washes up on the beaches. It's worth like thou- hundreds of thousands of dollars per pound or something weird because they use it in um, colognes and perfumes to keep the scent for a long time. Whale vomit. They found yeah. this. It, it, it solidifies. From sperm whales, it's something in their stomach, and when they die, they regurgitate this stuff up. And it solidifies, and if you're lucky enough for it to wash up on the beach, you just made $100,000 because you pick it up and you sell it to a perfume company for $100,000. Leave it up to an Australian person and to find that, by the way. And then try well, like, so all right, got bit by a shark, found some whale semen, <laughs> used it in a perfume, right? <laughs> <laughs> Everything's okay. <laughs> well, so, so this dude this dude finds it, right? This guy who owns a brewery finds this stuff, and instead of selling it for a ton of money, he keeps it and says, I want to make a beer out of it. And he made a beer out of whale vomit. And apparently, the reviews are that it's the most disgusting fucking thing on planet Earth. <laughs> but, but I'm but sure that dude is like everybody so is selling. No, he he's like it sucks. But people are buying it like fucking crazy because of what it is. And I'm like, well, I'll try weird beer. I, and I'm like in the same boat where I'm like, I'm sure it fucking sucks. I want to drink a glass of it. Can you imagine going to like op- can you imagine going to like opposite trench day or opposite Huda Poo day? It's like we are waiting in line to get the worst beer of all time. I am right. buying cases of this bullshit. Like, two bottle limit for the whale vomit. Two bottle limit. But again, leave it up to an Australian guy. They're the most optimistic people in the world. Like I like to think I'm optimistic to a certain degree. They're like they're like Missing four fingers because a stingray bit my arm. It's all good though. Uh, like still yeah. got my thumb, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Found some whale vomit. Turned a beer into it. It's terrible, but people buy it. <laughs> no, the best one. Uh, that one was funny. The best part about the other, uh, the Czech beer, is it guarantees that the the woman's essence will stay with you for one week. Oh. <laughs> It, that's a guarantee. Just what I want. <laughs> that's Why? a guarantee. You get you get to keep her essence for a whole week. I'm body. like, bitch, Probably I'm gonna piss that, that shit out in like a, in an hour. <laughs> <laughs> that essence ain't being anywhere near you. me. Yeah, it stays with you. So anyway, Imperial caramel cream is awesome. Here's the one thing about it. So 
Jeff and Peril, and Peril, you already finished your intro. I finished. Pre-mail. It's amazing. I mean, we know it's amazing. Oh, we do have one more. If we're gonna pass. Yeah. Oh shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We do. One more. All right, Uno Mas. I've already had it, so I'll I'll kick it off. So I guess. the the last one here, and Ooh, it is shit. it is yeah, it's fucking awesome. So um, nice. we took our Mariana Trench Imperial Stout, the award winning Mariana Trench Imperial Stout. We aged oh, it so in wicked warm. wicked dolphin um, rum barrels. Um, it's kind of a neat little program that we're doing with them. Um, they're taking the barrels that we aged Mariana Trench in, and then using them to distill rum in. So it's really kind of neat. Uh, they're going to be doing a bottle release relatively soon, probably within the next year or so. But, again, that barrel right now did have rum in it. It now had Mariana Trench, and they are going to put more, more rum, rum in, in, it. in yeah. that barrel. Oh, that's cool. Which we're pretty happy about. So it's like but a pass-off program. <laughs> correct. Um, I mean, local distillery and local breweries coming together. So this one is relatively young. This beer was released to the public yesterday. Uh, in bottle sales and in draft. So that rum on the nose and the rum on the palate is still pretty heavy. However, versus our bourbon barrel aged trench, which was released to the public, it's not nearly as hot. That sure. that rum flavor is there, but it's not overbearing. It's oh, no, like you nice know sweetness to it. Almost. Yeah, it's it's not like you're doing a shot of rum and then chugging an Imperial Stout. Right. This blend is perfect. I mean the, oh, the, yeah. the blend of that vanilla with a little bit of that sea salt blended with like that that sweetness of the rum, that sugary sweetness, it's unreal. Um, I, I had one for the first time before you guys showed up. I uh, I got all podcast willied and had two yeah. beers for you. Uh, yeah. So so uh, I had two rum trenches before you showed up, and uh, I I fell in love with that beer immediately. I think it's, so one it's of amazing the, warm, amazing warm. And I mean you know bourbon barrels are usually like the way to go when it comes to beer, and a lot of people will will use the first bathroom, use the first bathroom. Uh, right through those doors, dude. Um, hey, don't worry oh, about no, it, Brian. No, good. It's all good. Um, but uh, <laughs> wait, but he's Brian too. There's two Brians. Holy! He actually shit. has my old name tag when I worked here as a tap room person, <laughs> <laughs> and he spells it with a Y, so that's awesome. It's, <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, no, I mean the, the, the rum is there, but I mean this imparts that sweetness, and I really think that it does more justice to the beer than bourbon barrel aging can. Yeah. So it's uh, I've been drinking it periodically from cold to warm. Um, and cold, I thought it needed more age. Um, I thought it was very rum and, and barrel-y and, and boozy. As it got warm, usually the opposite. Usually the booze comes out when it gets warm. This one, like, blended and mellowed out mellowed as it got way yeah. Now when it's warm, I'm, I'm enjoying the shit out of it. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to have to take out my fridge when I get home and just leave it out on the counter. So I think, I mean, every beer that we've had so far um, has been, like, legit. Really legit. Not one beer that I was like, no, oh, you know, it's okay, or it's average, or like, no, oh, you know. Dew South is amazing. It's like everything is like just great beer. Fantastic. And, and, and again, I, I think a large part of the reason why a lot of people don't know who we are is because we've never really communicated our story. Yeah. So when I, went, when I was going back to, you know, what we were talking about earlier, you know, with, with what new, what's new and exciting, we're going to be communicating that a little bit more effectively than we ever have. Right, and that's yeah. awesome. That's it's great. like super cool for you that you get to work for a brewery where you actually enjoy drinking your own beer. It's it's the greatest thing in the world that I've I feel I've like worked. You have to do that because if you can't, that's Mix there's so many there's so many people Mix who have to fake it and you don't because your beers are great. It's and, and the thing is it's I you know everyone always, oh it's your favorite beer and like you know like I bullshit and I'm like oh cat four you know yeah, yeah it's like Sophie's choice if I like I couldn't pick just one do you know what I mean it's right. not like I couldn't live on an island and be like. But Imperial Caramel Cream, you can't come? No, no, you have to come. And you, uh, Weekend Advice, you have to come too. And several nights <laughs> song. It, it would be like a, an island of the beers and I would be cast off. It's like, yeah. all right, as long as you guys are okay. Yeah. But, yeah, it's it's one of those things, man. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a great company to work for. Um, it, it's a great brewery to work for. Um, the, the people running it are, are so easy to work for. And... I, I, I mean, you know, it's even when I wasn't working for Do South, which is why I came back. Um, I, I left here to take a promotion with a distribution network. Um, I left. I was gone for about a year and a half, maybe two years. Um, and, and the role I was in before was such bullshit. It was, it was two days a week. It was Wednesday, Saturday, and Sunday, occasional Sunday for right. tours. And um, uh, I would come in here in the building you know, not selling their beer out in the market, working for another uh, brewery. 
they would give me uh, employee beer, you know, underfilled cans and some other stuff. It's like, you're part of the family, man. I'm like, I haven't been here in a year and a half, and you're giving me free beer. That's unreal. Yeah. And like, oh, you want a T-shirt? Yeah, I'll, I'll take a T-shirt. And like, oh, this one's for you. You know, it's a club, t- you know, you know, this, that, and the other thing. Sure. So when, when Mike finally approached me to take this job, I'm like, there's no, we don't have to talk tomorrow at all, man. Yeah. Like taking this shit right now. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I, I'd love it, 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 for, for me, it was coming back home. I live five minutes from here. So it, it was coming back home. Uh, figuratively and literally and and all that stuff that's so, awesome man yes, there's something great. to be said in, in, about a company that really takes notice and takes care of their employees and treats them right and and that will take you so far in business um you know it's not necessarily apparent to the consumer won't necessarily know how you are treated but they will because when you treat your employees properly then it shows all the way through and that's why your beers are great and that's why you're out in the market working as hard as you do and doing everything you do because you love this place right? and because they love you and they appreciate what you're doing. So that's, I mean, I, I'm really happy to hear that yeah. because I love do South and I'm glad that they understand what they're doing in business and understand how to treat people. And it's really awesome. So Brian, as we're, as we're kind of wrapping up here, anything you kind of want to give a shout out to plugs, we don't do plug it anywhere, but we'll, we'll let you do plugs. Um, <laughs> Only you, though. I'll be plugging your mom. Oh, no, oh. no, no, I'm kidding. Um, sorry, plugging your dad. It's Father's Day. Um, <laughs> <laughs> We're plugging dads on this episode. No, a um, uh, special shout out to um, you guys for coming here at the Bar Podcast. Um, we will certainly uh, flood all of our outlets letting you uh, when this releases. Uh, sorry, it's released right now. Um, you know, <laughs> you're listening to it right now. <laughs> you're listening to it live. It's not Father's Day. No, um, no, we'll, we'll certainly do that. You guys, um, it's it's always great to have fans. Um, I, I I I don't have a whole lot of people to plug at the moment. I will say that June 28th, Category Four IPA drops. Uh, we're very happy about that. Dry Hop Series Pales. We're incredibly happy about that. Um, like you know, you did there. Yep. <laughs> Keep your eyes peeled for the new tap room opening up sometime in January. Um, and uh, to all our fans, um, or, oh, sorry, I should plug. To all the people who think Cat 5 doesn't stand up to any other Imperial IPA in the United States of America, Brian Tonneson on Facebook, and I'm not the little Norwegian boy, I'm the dude standing next to the dude South Snifter. Uh, tell me that I'm wrong, and I will tell you that you're wrong. Um, and fuck you. Yeah, and fuck you. No. no. <laughs> and also send all those comments to add the bar podcast, because I, I think it'd be hilarious. Do yes. that shit. Please do. Um, you friend that little Norwegian boy. And the Norwegian boy needs friends. <laughs> he oh, needs some friends. He looks like he's having a great time there. He's got Lefsa on his face. He's having a great time. Um, <laughs> that is potato flatbread for those of you who don't know Norwegian food or culinary. Uh, <laughs> um, but but to that end, um, thank you to everyone who's ever purchased the Do South beer. Thank you to everyone who's ever purchased the pint. World of Beer UCF, we can't thank you guys enough for supporting us in Orlando. Oh. Um, uh, that's Yo, all. come to fucking Do South. What the fuck? Oh yeah! Hey, it, oh. Only, it only took us forever. <laughs> yeah. so. Oh uh, well, here we go. Thank oh, sorry. God, we finally got here. Ladies man. and gentlemen, come to Do South Brewing, twenty nine hundred High Ridge Road, food trucks Thursday through Sunday. Sunday, Sunday. That's Crowler a fills. <laughs> Such a promo. Yes. Do South. Do Sunday. 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 High Ridge Road. <laughs> I mean, we we talk about Do South all the time on the podcast. Yeah, and, and it's like, almost like this visit too just, much, but it's not because they're awesome. But this visit solidified all the dumb shit we say, Jeff. You and I don't say you and I. All the dumb shit I say. Okay, well, I was being polite. <laughs> I'll all the take dumb the shit blame. you say. <laughs> all the dumb shit that you on air correct me on, and I actively tell you you're wrong, and then we find out that you were actually right, and I was yeah, wrong. Like saying Rolling Rock was an ale. Hey, I thought it was an EPA, dog. It very well may be at this point. It's made in St. Louis. It's not made in uh, Latrue. I don't think that they're lagering that beer for a long time, okay? So that come down to, to get south, out. for reals. You won't be disappointed. No, not at all. And everyone's I'm really so nice, glad friendly. I got out here. Everyone's really happy, happy to serve you guys you know, and everything. So Kara's tight. Yeah, come yeah, to Boynton Beach. Yeah, I agree. And if you see this man's face, 
it'll always brighten your day. Yeah. I will certainly try to. God, if you see Brian down here, just come and give him a big hug. Brian with an I and not a Y. They, um, <laughs> we don't know Brian with I, a Y. <laughs> when, I, when I first got hired, Joel Arbro. he does Arbro, work here, too. Joel, he well, it too. actually wasn't when I first got hired. I, I came down here when I was working for Brown and picked up some growlers for an event in Miami. And Joel, our brewer, was just working down here for the first time and uh, – took some growlers from him and I by the time I got on the road it was a Facebook post that had like a 3,000 likes it seemed like it's like Brian Tonneson just showed up and I'm gonna be in a good mood for the whole day dude has Care Bear gonorrhea or something <laughs> <laughs> Care Bear gonorrhea <laughs> yeah. those Care Bears definitely have STDs dude they you know they fuck each other <laughs> well, no, we, were, we were gonna make shirts like Care Bear so like mine was gonna be an anchor and his was gonna be a cup of coffee and like some dude was gonna have bubbles like Care Bears yeah, like yeah. bubbles for caramel That'd cream be legit. yeah yeah and then it's like, no, we're not wasting the money on that. <laughs> well, we, we'll just wear our two we'll, South shirts. We'll, we'll do personal tees if we want to yeah. do that. I'm going to give a shout-out to Joel, man. Brukaki. Yeah, boo, brew Brukaki. 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 Yeah. Not Bukaki. Don't look guy. for Bukaki. There are some things I'd love to talk about of what he was able to do that I can't, but it's the funniest shit I ever heard in my life. I will tell you off mic, it's the coolest. Cool. Just don't search for Bukaki. <laughs> <laughs> search for Brukaki. Brew Brukaki. You right. won't find much. Bukaki will give you a lot more stuff. <laughs> I just don't think you'll be happy with it. Yeah. So come on down to Due South here in Boynton Beach, South Florida. You will not be disappointed. Once again, thanks for everybody for listening and watching. You can find us on all social media. I will be posting that in the video. I'm not going to say it all again. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, <laughs> Google Play. Not going to say it all again, iTunes. and then I'm going to say it all. Well, I'll give a, a huge thanks to Brian. Stitch. And, and the people. I did say Stitcher. Okay. You got Stitcher. You got it all. Huge thanks to Brian and the Do South staff. No, guys, being thank, so you, nice, thank man. you again for thinking of awesome. us and coming by, and we're thrilled. We were pumped to be here. Absolutely excited. So thank you for thank letting you. it happen. Awesome. So thanks again for listening and watching. Until next time, we'll see you at the bar. See you at the bar. <laughs> <laughs>